All right, everybody, we're live again. We are the Jocks of All Trades podcast. I'm Brad. This is Luke and Kyle. You already know what it is. Um, guys, we've already done one mock draft, but with some weird trades and some stuff coming up, we thought we would do a second one just for some spicy takes. Um, Kyle, do you want to go ahead and start us off with our draft? Yeah, absolutely. We'll go the number one overall pick. It hasn't changed. The Jacksonville Jaguars, I have them taking Trevor Lawrence. That hasn't changed at all. I don't think anything is going to differ from that. So I have Trevor going number one. Same. As do I for the same reasons. (laughs) All right, we'll go to number two. This is where it gets a little little spicy for me. I have the Jets passing on Justin Fields, and I have them taking Zach Wilson at number two overall. Um, I think they're going to be really impressed with Zach Wilson on his pro day, all his arm angles, his big arm, and I think – there are some questions about Justin Fields, not by me, but by other people. I think they're going to take Zach Wilson at number two. I am going to have to disagree with you there. I think they'll still pull the trigger on Justin. The fact is they need someone. They need someone Lamar Jackson-ish who can still make plays on the run because – they don't have an O-line. That's why Sam Darnold was so bad. And so Zach Wilson strikes me more as a pocket passer. But if they need someone who can make plays with his feet and run around a little bit, because they're going to need him to run around, because if he doesn't, he's going to get hit, and he's going to hit get hit hard. So I'm saying that they're probably going to still pick up Justin because of his legs. Then we all three will be in disagreement. This is my first trade in this round. Um, Deshaun Watson will finally find a new home and it will be with the New York Jets. The Jets will give up their, both of their first rounders from this draft pick and probably some more. I'm not going to speculate on what they give up, but for the rest of this draft, it is the Texans selecting for the first time in a long time. The Texans are going to take Zach Wilson as their starting quarterback. Zach Wilson, his pro day was great, uh, or it will be great because we've already seen what he's been doing. Um, I don't think they will go for the option guy i think they're going to go for a pocket passer um which will probably end up being zach wilson here's the thing justin fields is a great player i'm not denying it i think he is more of a runner than zach wilson let's look at patrick mahomes in the super bowl he was he's the best player in the league but he was still murdered by a horrendous offensive line patrick mahomes is not a running quarterback but he can make plays with his legs with his arm i think zach wilson while i'm not going to compare him to patrick mahomes he can still make plays with his legs and his arm. Is he as fast as Justin Fields, as elusive as Lamar Jackson? No. But Lamar Jackson, even though I like the guy, there are still questions about his arm. They're trying to design an offense around him, and the passing game has not been there consistently for him. So if we're comparing Lamar Jackson and Justin Fields, I think the Jets would want more of a pocket passer um, to build around. And their offensive line is definitely not as bad as the chief was in the Super Bowl. So that's my reason. Uh, you can disagree with that point. Let's go to number three. I have Miami Dolphins selecting Jamar Chase from LSU. Brad, I like your pick on the last draft with Jamar Chase. I think you're right. I think a lot of people are kind of concerned about Devonta Smith's um, height and weight and strength. And Jamar Chase, they've said he's the best receiver uh, in this draft and the best receiver in a long time the most polished receiver. So I'm going to go Jamar Chase at number three. I'm actually going that direction as well. I think really it's, it's going to be a toss up for whatever, because what uh, Devonta doesn't have in physical build, he makes up with smarts. He makes up with what cut he brings to the locker room. And the, the man is just smooth as he runs across the football field. It's, it's, an aesthetic wonder to watch. Um, I do believe the Miami Dolphins want to try to get someone a bit more physical. So I think they're going to pull the trigger for Jamar Chase, but it really is a toss up and it depends on what you want. Do you want silky smooth and pure unadulterated skill? If so, you want Devonta. Do you want someone who's a bit more physical and physically imposing than you want Jamar? Um, for that reason, it is kind of a toss up. I have Devonte Smith going to the Dolphins here. Um, yeah, ha ha ha. Uh, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> um, I, I gave my reasons last week, uh, but I also agreed with you guys in the last draft. 
he is the better player, I think, out of the two of them. Uh, Devontae Smith, that is. Um, granted, do I think he's the better receiver? No, but I think he's the better athlete. Um, and maybe the Dolphins pull the trigger on we'd rather have the better athlete in our facility and work with him that way. Well, I just raved about you for 30 seconds, Brad, bringing up good points in your last draft, and then you just <laughs> go the other way. Okay, uh, at number four, I have the Atlanta Falcons selecting Justin Fields from Ohio State. I don't think he'll pass the Falcons. You can't. Now with Matt Ryan there in the fold, uh, he's not getting any younger, and they need an option for their future. I think Justin Fields is the number three quarterback, probably number two quarterback in this draft, so you have to pull the trigger and get Justin Fields. Um, I also have the Atlanta Falcons taking the next best quarterback in my draft. Um, I have them taking Zach Wilson. They need a quarterback for exactly the reasons Kyle said. Uh, Justin, um, not Justin, um, Matt Ryan is not the choice for them going forward. Uh, they need another franchise QB. And I think Zach Wilson can very easily be that guy for them. Kyle, you and I were in complete agreement here. Justin Fields comes off my board here at four for very good points. Um, Matty Ice, I don't think, is the longevity pick for them. Uh, and it would be really good to bring a homecoming pick there with Justin Fields. For sure. Let's go to number five. I have the Cincinnati Bengals selecting Penny Sewell, tackle from Oregon. You can't pass him up. Generational tackle. He didn't allow any sacks this year or last year. Like, he doesn't give up any pressures either, which is crazy. You need someone to protect Joe Burrow. And I'll say it again. You need someone to protect Joe Burrow. You can't pass him up. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that too. The thing is, the other part of it is, Joe Burrow also needs weapons. They need a, he, he needs a lot of weapons. And I think Devonta Smith can be that guy. So I have the Bengals taking Devonta Smith at the number five pick. And I think it actually is really funny. You have the Alabama QB getting the LSU wide receiver and you have the LSU quarterback getting the Alabama wide receiver. So you have SEC love all around everywhere. So, I mean, I think that they could get him. If they're going to get Joe Burrow a weapon, they need to pull the trigger on Devonta Smith. Peeny Sewell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Lucas. T. Higgins, Autumn T. And Tyler Boyd, not enough for you. Come on, man. <laughs> I mean, he would he would make that team more exciting, no doubt. And you do need to give your quarterback a bunch of weapons. But, like, I am tired of seeing teams pass offensive linemen and getting their quarterbacks smushed. If anything, tired of it. If anything, if the Bengals are going to select anything at five and it's not an offensive tackle, I would say Kyle Pitts. They need a tight end desperately. Yeah, yeah, I could see that too, for sure. Um, maybe, maybe. They, they need a quarterback friendly weapon on that team. Yeah. Uh, let's go to number six. I have the Eagles selecting Patrick Sertain, corner from Alabama. Um, it is not what I want, but it's what I think Howie will want because he wants to <laughs> say, well, I drafted J.J. Arcega Whiteside and Jalen Rieger, and they're going to pan out, even though they probably won't. So he's going to get, you know, he's going to be an idiot and select Patrick Champagne at number six. Um, I have a little bit more faith in um, the guy. I, I think he's going to be banging his head on his table saying, I wanted Jamar or Devonta. And he's going to be so ticked off, but he's going to take the next best thing. I have them take, have him taking Jalen Waddle from Alabama as a, the wide receiver option, I think Jalen Waddle was supposed to be, before he got injured, was supposed to be one of the best wide receivers in college football last year. And when he got injured, and you can tell that he has loyalty. He loves playing for his team. He didn't have to play in that national championship. And the fact that he did, and he, he did not, he didn't look 30%. If we're talking like looking 100%, he didn't look 30% in that game. So, I mean, you can tell that he loves playing with the team. He loves playing with his teammates. I think that I think the Eagles want someone with that kind of locker room mentality, with that kind of team loyalty, and who's just that good of a player. So I have them pulling the trigger for Jalen Waddle. Patrick Sertan. 
I had it. I had it too. Just Bro, because I, I think I think Howie won't be smart enough to pick up the greatest need for the Eagles, but he will pick up a good need for the Eagles. Yeah, they, they need a corner. I'm not denying that, but like <laughs> they've they've botched a receiver position year after year after year. It's just like they need someone there. But he's gonna do it again. Yeah, he'll probably do it again. Uh, let's... No, if, if I'm a Tua. <laughs> No, no, not Tua. If I am Jalen Hurts, I'm looking at him. I'm going, I'm looking at Howie and going, what, what, what the crap, man? <laughs> I mean, that's what Give Wentz me been, something. That's what Wentz has been doing the last few years. So Hurts will probably do it again. Uh, let's go to number seven. I have the Detroit Lions selecting Devonta Smith. He's the best player on the board at seven for me. And I don't think they have any direction. They definitely need uh, defense at every position. So you can make a case for that. But they got Jared Goff. They have a bunch of first-round picks in the future. And I think they're just going to go best player available. Because when you stink that bad, when you're a horrible franchise, you can't pick for need. You have to pick for best player available. You have to get talent on your team. And Devonta's the most talented player. Um, I, I would agree. Um, the thing I, – I agree with what you said before. Their defense is – horrible and they need someone to shore up that defense and so that's why i have them taking patrick Sertain at as the uh, number seven pick that guy i think can really help shore up their defense playing alongside someone like jeff akuda would it would make that defense very young very talented and have a lot of potential for the future um i'm gonna go completely different from both of you i have the detroit lions selecting wyatt davis um here's why uh detroit came out today and was saying that they want to start having deandre swift as a 21 to 25 touch back in the new system because i don't trust jared goff don't know about you guys um but deandre swift with a really terrible o-line played really well i think if you throw somebody else in there get a young uh young a young guard give yourself some run game then when you get rid of goff and you end up getting your successor to goff now you've got a decent line. You can te- you can hand the ball off. There's not as much pressure on that quarterback to perform and perform immediately. I think they're just going to stick Jared Goff out there with no help. <laughs> Let, him <get> beat to- <laughs> Let him get beat to death. Classic <laughs> Lions. I Classic. I do like that pick, though. Let's go to number eight. I have the yes. Carolina Panthers selecting Trey Lance, quarterback from North Dakota State. They need a quarterback. Bridgewater, I've heard, is might be on the move. They're in a lot of trade talks for guys like Wentz and Sam Darnold. I'm sure they've even asked about Sean Watson. I'm sure they've asked about Russell Wilson. They need a quarterback. I don't think they trust Teddy Bridgewater. I think they're going to go Trey Lance at number eight. I'm going in a slightly different direction. I agree that quarterback is a need for them. However, I think the even bigger need is that defense. It needs to get shored up. Therefore, I, I think they're going to take Caleb Farley the corner out of Virginia Tech. I think that if they go that direction, they set themselves up to at least improve their atrocious defense uh, in the future. Luke and I are thinking big defensive moves. You're absolutely right. I still just can't get away from this pick, and I just really love this pick. And if Carolina is smart, this is their pick. Uh, You're still missing Luke Kuechly. No matter what you do on defense, that dude was a presence. And without that, your run your run defense is just atrocious. I still think they're going to take Micah Parsons because Micah Parsons is a freak. He can play many different positions. He's smart. I think he's pretty pretty dang close to Luke Kuechly, which is what they're missing. I think once you put that back in there and give a leader to that defense and a brain, maybe you'll start to see some different stuff happening. Hmm. Micah Parsons would look good in a Panthers uniform. Uh, let's go to number nine. I have the Denver Broncos selecting Micah Parsons linebacker from Penn State. Just kind of the same reason you echoed, Brad. I do think they need some playmakers on the defense. Von Miller is getting incredibly old, and I think there's some issues with what he's done recently. I don't know what the whole thing is, but he might be on his way out. Um, on the other side, Bradley Chubb still very productive. They need a linebacker in the middle of that defense who can also rush the passer, who can also blitz. And I think Michael Parsons would be a great fit in Denver. I have the exact same dude. I have Micah Parsons going to the Denver Broncos for those exact same reasons. They're, that defense is getting older, and they need a captain, at least a young captain who can take the mantle once uh, Von Miller and Bradley Chubb um, are, are 
are not there anymore. So I think Micah Parsons is not going to be that dude. I agree. A linebacker will be selected here, but I was thinking more of a flexible linebacker. I have Jeremiah owosu koromoa going here because uh, he can kind of play different stuff, and that defense needs a lot. They need somebody that's kind of flexible, and that was the first guy that came to my mind. Ooh, he's going early. Mm -hmm. But they did say he's um, – he'll be very good in the modern NFL because he can cover running backs and tight ends, which is what teams need. You look at the Cowboys who selected Jalen Smith a few years ago and then extended him. He isn't even that great at defending running backs and tight ends, but he's at least decent and like teams need linebackers and they paid him big money. So that would be a good fit at number 10. I have the Dallas Cowboys selecting Kyle Pitts tight end out of Florida Dallas loves a sexy pick. They got C.D. Lamb last year. Even though they should probably go corner, they should go defensive line, offensive line. They're not going to pass on Kyle Pitts because he's one of the freakiest freaks in this draft. He's one of the most talented players, and he's the best player on the board yet. And they just like talent. They like sexy. It's, it's Dallas. It's big. They're going to go Kyle Pitts. I have them going a slightly different direction. Let's not forget – Really, probably the best offensive weapon they have on that team still is Zeke Elliott. And they want to try to bring back the glory days of feeding Zeke, I'm sure. I have them um, adding to that O-line that's not that great right now. I have them adding Penny Sewell to that line. And so really shoring that up so that even if Dak doesn't come back, if, even, even if Dak doesn't return to that team, they can still feed Zeke. Um, defense, I still think, is their greatest need, no matter what else they need. I have Caleb Farley from Virginia Tech going here. That secondary was just terrible. Um, I think if their secondary was better, they may have led that whole division because they didn't play terrible in the first half of the season. But without Dak and a terrible defense, they got exposed really bad. For sure. Yeah, if they had a defense earlier that year, they might have been in the playoffs. Let's go to number 11. I have the New York Giants selecting Jalen Waddell receiver from Alabama. It was the same in my last draft. They desperately need a receiver. They need to give help to Daniel Jones, even though I don't think he is the answer quite yet. He's the best receiver on the board. They need someone to pair with Shepard and Barkley in the backfield and Ingram at tight end. So I'm going to go Jalen Waddle. Uh, I have them. I mean, really the giants are kind of, kind of a mess. And they have, they have some weapons on offense. I don't think they have really any weapons on defense. And they need to be able to generate at least some kind of pass rush. I have them taking Quiddy Pay, the defensive end for out of Michigan. If they can some, generate some sort of pass rush in today's pass-heavy NFL, that would be a great addition to their defense. Um, Kyle and I are on the same page here. But the best receiver that I still have on the board is Jamar Chase. Um, I think Jamar Chase would be a really good pickup for them for obvious reasons. They really need the help. Daniel Jones is not that bad of a quarterback. I've come out and defended him before. He just doesn't have anything to work with besides Saquon. And once you take Saquon out of the picture, you're done. So obviously that means they need weapons. Sweet. Uh, sweet. To the point. Uh, let's go to number, what is this, 12 now? I have the 49ers selecting Caleb Farley, corner from Virginia Tech. Uh, Richard Sherman's on the outs here soon. They need corners desperately. Defensive line is going to come back. They're going to come back hopefully healthy. Fred Warner in the middle of that defense is a very good linebacker. I don't think they need one right now. Um, you can make a case for quarterback. I know they've been looking for quarterbacks. I don't think Jimmy G is the answer at all. But maybe they'll find one later in the draft or they'll trade for one. So I'm going to go Caleb Farley. Um, I, think, I think right now Jimmy G's biggest problem is that he doesn't have enough protection. He needs to have an O-line that can give him time, especially on the inside of that O-line. I have the 49ers taking Elijah Vera Tucker, the lineman out of USC. I think if, if, he, if that kid can serve as an anchor for that offensive line, it will certainly help. And you'll probably see maybe a bit more production out of Jimmy G. You know, we all have talked about Jimmy G, but I think Jimmy G is the problem. Um, I have them picking up Trey Lance here. He's still on the board. I think it could be a, one of these kind of things. They seem to like those small, like, school QBs with Kaepernick. And if you look again with Garoppolo, I think they'll take a shot. 
because I mean his stats look really great. There's no reason he shouldn't be selected, but I think he'll go to San Fran. Yeah, really, just like don't turn it over and don't get sacked. And that 49ers offense will like keep moving. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Jimmy he kept doing both of them. Uh so if you get a quarterback in there that just doesn't like screw up, like I think you could easily be a playoff team. Because look at the Rams. They were in the playoffs and Jared Goff sucked butt last year. You know what I mean? Like, if you have a half decent quarterback in that kind of system, like you could be a playoff team. But I don't know if Jimmy G's even that. Um, I'm going to go to the Chargers next. I have them taking Rashawn Slater, the tackle slash guard from Northwestern, give Justin Herbert protection. I think they have enough weapons, maybe. Um, Hunter Henry's pretty good tight end. Hopefully, they resign him. That's, that'll be a big key in the offseason. But they need to protect Justin Herbert. And Rashawn Slater, the best tackle on the board for me. So I'm going to go him. I have the exact same dude going the exact same way. I have Rashawn Slater going to the Chargers for the exact same reasons. Um, get some protection for both for the for that guy playing under center and uh, shore up. And that would also help your run game. The, the, the offense needs help on that team. The defense has a lot of studs playing for him with Joey Bosa on the on the defensive line and then some studs behind him. But yeah, no, they need to um, upgrade the offense and the line is where they need to start. You know, Kyle, you were talking about a sexy pick and this is time for a sexy pick. Now, whether Hunter Henry moves on or not, Kyle Pitts would be such an interesting mm-hmm. fit with Justin Herbert. You can stick him out far. You can stick him in the tight end position. You could even do some Kelsey kind of stuff and stick him in the backfield and do like a little dump pass. I think this is your best option for offense. Yes, get an, get an O-lineman, get one later in the draft, so fill that need. But I think if you're going to talk about their offense, you could really make it explosive. Hunter Henry, Austin Eckler, Kyle Pitts, Keenan Allen. You, like, you could just keep adding on to that, and you just become unstoppable at some point. Because a lot of their games were like this close. They were just mm-hmm. one touchdown away or one field goal away or one missed whatever away. They are that close, and I think if you add an electric player, you just take it and move it up to that next step. Yeah, if Kyle Pitts falls beyond 10 for me, I could see the Giants, the Niners, the Chargers. Oh, yeah. To definitely taking him. Like, you, you can't pass him up if he falls that, mm-hmm. falls that low. Um, let's go to the Vikings next. I have them taking Quiddy Pay, Edge from Michigan, and need pass rush. Kendricks in the middle is very good there. I know Harrison Smith's getting a little bit older. It took a couple corners last year. We didn't really pan out quite yet, but they're still young. They're going to need them some time. Um, so I'm going to go Quiddy Pay at defensive end. I'm not sold on Kirk Cousins, and I don't know if they are. So you might see some movement with the quarterback later in their draft or earlier, depending on what they want to do. But if they're fine with Kirk Cousins, I think they'll go defense. For me, I look at the offense for the Vikings and the the best weapon right now I think they have is Dalvin Cook. That man is a beast running the ball and he needs weapons of his own that can create running lanes for him. I, therefore, uh, I would want to upgrade the O-line there for both his sake and for Kirk Cousins' sake. I have them taking uh, Samuel Cosme, the offensive tackle out of Texas, just to shore up that O-line, give Kirk Cousins some more time to throw, some more time to create, as well as creating more holes, uh, and more opportunities for Dalvin. Let me give a shout out to somebody at work. Matt, we talked about this this past weekend. The defense is atrocious. Um, so I'm going to give you the best pick that you can make here. Here it is. You're going to hear about it on draft day. Christian Barmore, the defensive tackle from Alabama. Dude is huge. He is flexible. He is athletic. I have never seen that kind of like crap come out of Alabama. If it's coming out of Alabama, hopefully it translates better to the next level. It's true. From a sophomore, Kyle, from a sophomore. Excuse me, Quinton Williams was driven a couple of years ago. Quinton Williams is okay. <laughs> he was at like three overall. He's what? okay. What has he done with the Jets? That's the Jets. I don't know. He was still selected at number three. Hey, you know what? The the Jets are trash. If you go to the Jets, I don't. You could beat Tom Brady for all I care. You're not going to win. <laughs> yeah, I don't even yeah. know if it happened in my first round. Really? I don't think so. He's trying. I think. But... Well, I think a lot of these guys honestly could trend upwards, but they don't have the freaking combine. Seriously, 
You yeah. see so many players go upwards at the combine, but we don't have that. So I don't know if that'll yeah. differentiate all of these guys. So this um, is like a side thing, but we can't have the combine, but we're going to have an all-star game for the NBA. We should talk about that at some point. Like what, what are you doing? Well, I think it can, I think it can easily do both safely. Right. I think it could. Well, the thing is, you can put the NBA All Star Game in a bubble, and it still kind of works. Yeah, true. I think there's yeah. a way to do it, but yeah, let's go to the New England Patriots next. Um, I have them selecting Elijah Vera Tucker, lineman from USC. He is a big boy, very powerful. Reminds me of Brandon Brooks, the guard from the Eagles. Um, uses his hands very well. I don't know what the Patriots' plan is this offseason. I have no idea. They're one of the teams that I don't know where they're going to go. They could use quarterback. They could use defense. They could trade away Stephon Gilmore. I don't know. But I think Elijah Vera Tucker is the best player on the board. So I think they're going to go him. Yeah. Um, I don't see the Patriots picking up a QB in the draft. Um, I They should, but I don't see it. Uh, here, here, here's what I envision. I envision Bill Belichick sitting, watching the Super Bowl, watching Tom Brady and Gronk become the best touchdown duo in history and they're going you know what i'm going to bring back the glory days and kyle pitts is the way to do it so mm-hmm. i have him picking up kyle pitts the tight end out of florida the, as you guys have been saying the kid is a freak and so whoever he's going to get as quarterback he is going to be a massive boom to. so no i have him i have them the patriots picking up kyle pitts in the draft all right guys strap in it's time for one of brad's crazy theories um so first of all, this has already been a report that's come out. Um, they've had some conversations with this player. Um, Bill Belichick is the master of, here's what we think is going to happen, and here's what's in Bill Belichick's head. He is really great at it. I think it's time to move on from Cam Newton, and I think they're going to select a quarterback. And it's not even a quarterback that anyone has projected in the first round. They're going to take Kyle Trask out of Florida. I just – I have a feeling. But watch. See, he's productive. But see, Bill Belichick will make the most out of it. I fully believe that whoever he takes, he will turn into some kind of freaking demigod because Bill Belichick is Bill Belichick. Well, you have apparently forgot about the GOAT, Jared Stidham. That's still there. Jared so. Stidham was not. Mac Jones is still there. <laughs> Who? <laughs> oh, I thought you meant I thought you meant with the Patriots. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? Okay. No, no, no. I mean, Mac, Mac Jones is still on the board. If you're going to go with a QB, you take Mac Jones. You don't. That, sh- it's Mac that shows. <laughs> that shows you how much uh, Brad doesn't believe in Mac Jones. I do. Kyle I Trump. don't trust Bill Belichick. <laughs> dude, uh, trust your players, man. Belichick is a demon. Yeah, I think they could take. <laughs> I think they could take Kyle Trask, but I think they might wait the second round to take him. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Uh, let's go to number 16. I have the Cardinals selecting Christian Darisaw, tackle from Virginia Tech. I saw a couple of mock drafts of them taking a receiver. I'm like, come on. You have DeAndre Hopkins. You have Christian Kirk. You have Andy Isabella. You have a couple of running backs. You could use a running back, like you said, in the last draft, but you need some protection for Kyle Murray. You don't want him to end up like Patrick Mahomes on a Super Bowl night because he ran around, what, 500 yards in total? Uh, you don't want to see that happen to Kyler Murray, so I'm going to go offensive line. I'm going to go Christian Darrison. Well, I, I, here's the thing. Kyler Murray needs to stop running around. Yes, he just needs someone to do the running for him. They need a running back, an actual stud of a running back. And as I was thinking, that there were two names that immediately came to mind. I'm going, all right, which one do you take? And I'm scratching my head. And so I um, I think that they're going to go with a bit more recency bias because body of work, total body of work in college, I think ETN is the man. But recency bias, I think they're going to pull the trigger for Najee Harris. And they're going to want someone beefy, someone who can run straight forward and knock guys over. I think they're going to pull the trigger on Najee Harris and start – utilizing him start having kyler murray hand the ball off to that man so that he has doesn't have to run around for days on end behind that line guys i might be nuts and here's why um i'm going oh we we already knew that brad don't worry about it (laughs) i'm going with defense kyle should like this pick uh their defense is really atrocious there's some good players but buda baker can't carry a whole defense um i have them taking jason Owe from uh, penn state dude is uh 
I, I just don't even need to explain it. He's versatile, and they need a versatile player. That would be nice. Interesting. Um, who's up next? 17? I have – okay. Las Vegas – I almost call them the Oakland Raiders. Las Vegas huh. Raiders selecting Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa at number 17. Like I said on the last podcast, I think they need someone in the middle of that defense. Um, they've used a lot of picks, a lot of high picks on defensive linemen. They use, they've used picks on cornerbacks, but their offensive line is pretty much stable. So I think they need a good linebacker in the middle. And like we explained earlier on, he can cover running backs. He can cover tight ends. He's a versatile linebacker that an NFL team needs. So I'm going to go him. I am also going to go with Jeremiah Uwusu koromoa uh, for the exact same reasons as Kyle said. Uh, you know, the Raiders need someone to shore up that defense. They're – they're a below average team right now, and the defense is a liability. I think if you give them a new captain, a young captain, someone who knows what they're doing, I think I think uh, Carmo is the way to go with that. I still think they miss uh, uh, Mac, Julio Mac. So I have mm-hmm. them taking Quitty Pay. Mm. They do miss Julio Mac. I saw on Twitter recently the their pass rush rankings in the last four years without Julio Mac. They haven't gotten higher than twenty fourth in the league. So they really yeah. miss him. They really miss him. Um, well, there's always something funnier than 24. 25. 25. <laughs> uh, let's go to 18. I have the Miami Dolphins selecting Jalen Mayfield, tackle from Michigan. They need someone else on the other side of Austin Jackson. And imagine if you can get both tackles shirt up in two years for your quarterback, Tua. Um, I'm going to go Jalen Mayfield. I think that'd be a good pick for him. I am thinking that Tua actually might need someone to hand the ball off to. I have them taking a running back, and I have them taking the next best op- the next best option. I have them taking ETN, Travis ETN, running back out of Clemson. I think he would add a lot to that team, and he would be a weapon for Tua out of the backfield. Luke and I have the same idea. I have them taking Najee Harris. Uh, reunite all those Bama boys together. Let them see what they can do together because Tua needs help desperately. Let's go to number 19. I have the Washington football team selecting Tevin Jenkins tackle from Oklahoma State. They need offensive line help. Uh, I hope Brandon Scherf is going to be back with him at guard. Morgan Moses is an okay tackle, but that offensive line at the end of the year was just completely beat up and he had backups in. And even though I think they got a lot out of the linemen, imagine what you could do with a really great prospect like Tevin Jenkins and mold him. Uh, quarterback is still an issue but maybe they'll get one in trade or via free agency. I don't know. But Tevin Jenkins is the pick for me. This is where I think mine get a little interesting. Um, You were saying, Kyle, that they might want to pick up a quarterback maybe in free agency or uh, somewhere else. Well, here's the thing. I think they're going to pick up one in the draft. I have them grabbing Mac Jones and uh, to um, fill the spot. And (laughs) – I mean, Washington, I feel like is up and coming, but it's still going to take a little bit for them to get where they need to be. Um, So Mac is going to need to take some hard knocks a little bit, I'm thinking, but we'll see. I mean, he's going to be throwing to probably one of the better receivers in Terry McLaurin. So we'll have Mac throwing to some good receivers. And so maybe he can be the next step up for them. I think Mac's going to be available in the second round if he doesn't get selected before 15. Um, so I think they'll still go after Mac Jones is what I had in like my projected second round. Um, but they really need to address something other than it just being Terry McLaurin. I agree with what you said in the last draft, Luke. Um, I have them taking the best receiver that's still on the board, and that's Jalen Waddle. Oh, he lasted till then. Holy crap. Well, yeah, that'd wow, be- dude. That'd be a slam dunk pick for them. Um, so that was Washington. Jeez, Waddle and Terry McLaurin. Oh, my word. That'd be tough to stop. Uh, at number 20, the Chicago Bears are up. I have them selecting Sam Cosby, tackle from Texas. They need a line. Cody Whitehair at center is okay for them. I know there are rumblings about maybe not holding on to him, but David Montgomery is an incredible running back, and he did so much behind that crappy O-line. Imagine what he could do 
behind some big boys up front. Uh, quarterback is still an issue for them. I feel like every team I'm going through, I'm like, well, quarterback is still an issue. And it is. So you hope maybe they can get a Carson Wentz or a Sam Darnold or a trade for someone or get someone in second round. But I think they need offensive line help desperately for whatever quarterback they have. So I'm going to go Sam Cosme. Yeah, no, it's, it's no secret. The Chicago Bears need a quarterback, whether it's Sam Darnold, Carson Wentz, or Trey Lance. I have them taking Trey Lance, guys. Um, I think they do need a quarterback, and I think they want a young quarterback, maybe someone they can maybe fashion for the long term. They want someone in that spot for the long haul. I don't, I don't think they want to keep with Trubisky. Um, Nick Foles, I don't see Chicago being the spot that he finally settles. I, I, it doesn't strike me as the best fit. They want to try to find someone new, someone fresh, a fresh face for this team. I think Trey Lance could be that guy. Kyle and I are of the same mindset here, although I have Jalen Mayfield from Michigan going here. Um, but, dude, David Montgomery is just a beast. Um, and I am so glad that you let go of him in fantasy, Kyle. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sad about that, too. Uh, <laughs> 21, here's where I have a trade. I think the Eagles are going to package Carson Wentz and Zach Ertz to the Colts for their first round pick. And I think the Eagles are now on the clock at 21. And I think they'll select Rashad Bateman, receiver from Minnesota. Um, even though I would much rather have Waddle or Devonta Smith or Jamar Chase, I think they'll go receiver. And I think Rashad Bateman will be average at best which makes sense because it's the Eagles. So I think we'll take Rashad Bateman because he's the best receiver on the board. <laughs> um, I have the, I have the Colts actually keeping their pick. I have them using it to uh, shore up the defense. I have them taking J.C. Horn, the cornerback out of South Carolina, shoring up that secondary, making it so that, you know, quarterbacks at least can't cut through it like a hot knife through butter. But, yeah, no, they need someone to shore up that defense and create some challenges for wide receivers downfield. I think J.C. Horton could be that guy. Kyle, you and I had the same exact trade and same exact picks for the Eagles. Really? I think we both have Howie Roseman wow. nailed. Yeah. Patrick Pan will go first, and then he'll pick up Rashad Bateman, expecting Rashad Bateman to be a big old boy, and he's yeah. just not going to cut it. So, yeah, there you go. That's exactly what Here I'm we doing. go again. We figured out the Eagles, guys. Average receivers, uh, not taking the right pick. That's what the Eagles do. Let's go to number – oh, if we were right, that would be awesome. 22, Easy. I have the Tennessee Titans selecting Aziz Ajulari. I don't think they'll bring back uh, Jadavion Clowney. Uh, corner is a need, but I think you can help your corners out by getting pass rush. Uh, the corner, Adoree Jackson from USC, he played very terribly in the playoffs this year. He got ripped to shreds, so you could easily make a corner um, here too, but I'll go Aziz Ajilari from Georgia. Um, I have – you mentioned pass rush as a problem for the Titans, and I agree. That's why I'm going with Joseph Asai from Texas as the the edge rusher out of Texas. They, they, they In a quarterback and passing heavy league, you need to have a pass rush if you're even going to have a shot. That, that's why I have them taking uh, Joseph Asai. Guys, here's the thing. When your best weapon is your running back and your running back still gets 2,000 yards with a crappy O-line, imagine what he could do with a better O-line because a lot of the times when they really needed Henry to run and they handed it off to him, that O-line just melted and it just wasn't there. Um, so I have Christian Derisaw going here, actually. I think as much as they need help on defense, get King Henry involved, get him involved more often. Tannehill clearly was not enough for them. So if you get back to your running game and back to your roots, maybe that'll help you get that playoff. Yeah, I, I can't name both of their tackles. I know they have Jack Conklin. Um, he's really good. Yep. I think someone got hurt, though, or left. I forget. I have to look that up, but I think offensive line is still definitely a need. Let's go to number 23, the New York Jets. I have them taking Travis Etienne, running back from Clemson. Uh, Frank Gore ain't going to cut it. Michael P. Ryan ain't going to cut it. Uh, if you have Zach Wilson as my number two pick, 
Travis Etienne as uh, the number 23 pick. I think it, it could be a very, very good duo. Um, their offensive line still needs some work, but Travis Etienne is and could be a stud at the running back position for them. That's a good pick. Um, I have, remember, I have Justin Fields still with the Jets. I do think he needs weapons. I think he needs weapons to throw to, more importantly. Uh, I have them taking Rashad Bateman, the um, wide receiver out of Minnesota. You reunite some Big Ten boys throwing to each other. And I think, I think you guys um, might be underestimating Rashad Bateman a little bit. He was a quality receiver for Minnesota. I mean, I think if he had a um, one of the quality quarterbacks throwing to him in college, he probably would have had a better shot. He's going to have Justin Fields throwing to him. And so I think he could be a very, very good fit for the Jets and for Justin Fields. Kyle, you and I both have Travis Etienne going here. I thought it would be cool to have the Clemson reunion here. They never played together, but Deshaun Watson and Travis Etienne in your backfield, boy, you better have some option plays like dialed yeah, up because be that's going to be dangerous. Yeah. yeah, I like that pick. I, yeah. I think I think Rashad Bateman is a good receiver, Luke. I just think that in terms of like what the Eagles need is they need like someone dynamic who can get open, who can do like everything. So I'm not saying like Rashad Bateman sucks, but like in terms of who the Eagles fans would want, he's who they good, need, not he I, I, again. He's he's a, he's a great receiver. He's not like elite level like right, Devonta, right. Jamar Chase, Jalen right. Waddle, those guys. And I agree with that. However, yeah. um, I think the word that was bantered around was average, and so yeah. I wouldn't call him average by any stretch of the imagination. He's good. He's great. He's just, I mean, he's not in that sector of elitism. Right. I'm just saying for like the Eagles. Yeah. And I don't want to harp on this for too long, but the Eagles MO. The Eagles what, need a lead. What usually happens is that no matter who they draft, they end up being average. So I think that's what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> let's go to the Steelers at 24. I have them selecting JC Horn corner uh, from South Carolina. That's actually Joe Horn's son, the receiver from New Orleans Saints. I just found that out a week ago. Wow. Um, I'm getting old. So. They need a corner opposite of um, – what the heck is his name? Oh, my gosh, I'm blanking. The Browns cornerback from a few years ago, Joe Hayden. Um, so, I think they're going to go J.C. Horn here. Um, I, for um, – let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, for this – we are – yeah, we're doing the Steelers pick. Yeah, uh, I have them taking Christian Derisaw. I think that they need some O-line. They need a – boost to that O-line for whoever's going to be playing quarterback for the Steelers. It shouldn't be Big Ben. They need to move on sooner rather than later. Um, I don't see them picking up a QB in the draft. I see them probably trying to find someone either in free agency or trade for somebody. Um, Or, you know, maybe they've already found their guy in uh, Dwayne Haskins. That'd be really fun to watch. But um, whoever's going to be playing quarterback back there needs protection and so I have them taking Christian Derisaw. There's been a lot of rumors about what's on the Steelers short list of what they'd like to grab at the 24 spot Um, and one of them is Alex Leatherwood. I really think Alex Leatherwood will be available there and I think if that's on their short list of people they want they'll take him for the same reasons Luke listed because even beyond just the quarterback you gotta establish a run game and Connor was not it and I don't know if that's the line or if that was Connor Invest in the line. Find out. Yeah. Uh, Let's go to number 25, the Jacksonville Jaguars. I have them selecting Pat Fryermuth, tight end from Penn State. Uh, So his tight end coach, (laughs) his tight end coach in college, Tyler Bowen, he just got signed by the Jacksonville Jaguars as their tight end coach. So he's going to reunite with his old college tight end coach and be there with the Jacksonville Jaguars, help out Trevor Lawrence, and be very, very solid and productive for them. So I'm going Pat at number 25. For the Jaguars, I plead with you, and I pl- I'm pleading with Urban Meyer right now, do not make the same mistake the Bengals did with dear Joe Burrow. Protect that man. Protect Trevor Lawrence. He's going to be the future of your franchise. Keep him healthy. Get an O lineman. I'm having them taking Jalen Mayfield from Michigan at that spot. I think he could do a great job shoring down that line. 
Not only would he serve to protect Trevor Lawrence, but even with the line they have now, James Robinson was one of the better running backs in the league last year. I know I had him on my fantasy team. So get um, both James Robinson, get him some help, get uh, Trevor Lawrence some protection, and you should be able to see both develop in big, big ways. Um, I have Samuel Cosme going off the board. I think this big boy is not going to last the second round. He is massive, and he is really good. Again, protect Trevor Lawrence. Let's go to the Cleveland Browns, number 26. They need someone opposite Miles Garrett. I have him selecting Gregory Rousseau, defensive end from Miami. At one point earlier this year when mock draft season started, uh, Gregory Rousseau was very, very high in this draft. Some people said top 15, some people said top 10, and some had him going top five. So I don't really know why he's dropping in everybody's mock draft, but he's a freak. He's very, very productive. Um, his last year, this year, he opted out. But I think he could be a very, very good tandem with Miles Garrett. And that it's very, very tough to stop, especially if you have the Cincinnati Bengals in that division who have no O-line. Once you have the Steelers in that division who are trying to get O-linemen, and then you have the Baltimore Ravens uh, with their linemen wanting to be traded. So, like, if you can capitalize right now, get pass rushers, go for it. I completely agree. I also have Gregory Rousseau going to the Browns. Imagine the tandem you have, the scissor motion that is coming in if you have Gregory Rousseau on one side and Miles freaking Garrett coming at you from the other side. That is a scary D-line. And anytime you can have a scary D-line, you take it. So no, I have um, I have Gregory Rousseau also going to the Browns. Um, I have the same pick as last time because I still can't get away with it. And I think it's absolutely necessary for the Browns have Zayden Collins from Tulsa, the big linebacker. Yes, yes, they need some D-line help, but holy crap, their linebackers suck. Like, they need somebody. Yeah, they could definitely use a linebacker here, too. Uh, I'm not sure where Zayden Collins went in my draft last time. But let's move on to number 27, the Baltimore Ravens. Like I just said, Brad, your tackle, Orlando Brown, Orlando Brown wants out. He wants to be traded. And I don't know if they're going to do it, but they might. I, they, they shouldn't because um, he's very, very good. But even well, with I that, them. I won't let you them. You won't let them. Oh, you're going to go down to Baltimore and, and decline it and interrupt that whole trade process. Go for it. I still think they need offensive linemen. Um, I'm going to have Wyatt Davis going here at 27 for the Baltimore yeah. Ravens. So you can make a case for a receiver too. But they definitely need O-line help to keep Lamar Jackson upright to keep that running game going with J.K. Dobbins. I think he can be a very, very good running back in this league. So keep with the old lineman going and get Wyatt Davis. Um, I have Baltimore shoring up the defense and primarily the defensive line. I have them taking Jalen Phillips, the other edge rusher out of Miami. Again, again in, in that division, the quarterbacks you have are Big Ben. I mean, okay, whatever. But maybe soon Dwayne Haskins. You have Baker Mayfield. And then you have Joe Burrow. And those are two very quality quarterbacks and one who at least should know what he's doing. So if you can shorten the time frame for them to throw the ball, any of them to throw the ball, you're probably going to win more games. And so you need to shore up that defense. You, Baltimore is famous for having a great defense. You need to bring those days back. I think Jalen Phillips would be an excellent addition. I, I disagree on one point. I still think their defense is massively good. Um, their offense, however, is not anywhere on par with the defense. Um, you need to take a receiver. I don't care what else you need. It has to be a receiver. If you don't, I will go down there and I will kick you in the gut myself. Um, it's annoying, but there is one receiver that I think deserves to go here. I like him a lot. Rondale Moore out of Purdue might actually be a really decent pick here. Dude is a freak. Dude is athletic. He might just work out with Marquise Brown. Yeah, he, I think I just saw it as pro day. He jumped like 42. That was his vert. And he's like, what, 5'9", five, 5'10"? Five, he can jump that high? Wow. Uh, I like that pick. Jalen Phillips. 
I have seen a lot of mocks Jalen Phillips going to Baltimore just because Baltimore is famous for selecting just pass rusher after pass rusher after pass rusher. Like they have endless ones and that's what makes their defense so good. But you're right, Brad. <laughs> they also need a receiver desperately. Um, Marquise Brown, I think, called himself a number two receiver recently, which is kind of weird to say that, but he did. So, like, you need a receiver with an attitude of a number one. Uh, I think Rondell Moore could be that. Let's go to number Mark 28. Andrews. Mark Andrews is our number one receiver. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, he's not <laughs> tight end. He definitely is. Uh, number 28, I have the Saints selecting Zayvon Collins. I'm back here from Tulsa just for the reasons that Brad mentioned. They need a stud in the middle of that defense. They have decent corners. Maybe you can make, can make a case for a corner, but their pass rush is very, very good. Their whole line is shored up. Um, I'm not a believer in Jameis Winston at all, but I guess Sean, Sean Payton is. <laughs> I don't get it, but they need a linebacker desperately. So I'm going to go with Zayvon Collins at number 28. I have the exact same dude at the exact same pick. I also have Zayvon Collins going to the Saints again. They need something to short down that uh, linebacker core. If they can get someone like Zayvon Collins, I say pull the trigger. Um, I have a really interesting one here. You know, for Breeze's last year, it was interesting that he didn't pass to his receivers a lot. He passed to his tight end, which is weird because Jared Cook is ancient. I think Jared Cook is going to hang it up soon, and a really good pick here for them would be Pat Freermuth. Um uh, because if you're going to keep doing that, and if Winston's going to keep doing that same thing, because I, I do think it's going to be Winston. I think Winston's going to be the starter. Sorry, all those fans that think they're going to trade for somebody. I don't think they are. Sean Payton seems pretty heavily invested in Winston. I mean, you go for it. You've got the, like, leading interception leader. That's great. But I think Rearmuth would be a really good fit there. Maybe do, like, a double tight end set. Who knows? Yeah, I think that would be a really good pick. Uh, I think we're both in agreement that Sean Payton has no idea what he's doing. I think he's so like, I think he has a big ego and he wants to change Jameis Winston, make him an elite quarterback, but I think it's just going to blow up in his face because it's Jameis Winston. Um, he'll be too busy eating, eating crabs down there instead of throwing touchdowns. I need that uh, meme of uh, what's his name. Just that's what I need. That's I need uh, that meme just for that. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, Oh yeah. I know the actor you're thinking of. I can't think of his name either. Josh is it Josh Gad. No, that is not Josh Gad. Who is it? That is. Yeah, keep going. I'll come up with his name eventually. All right, that's fine. <laughs> I forget that meme. Let's go to number 29. I have the Green Bay Packers selecting, selecting, I can't talk, selecting Kadarius Tony, receiver from Florida. They need someone opposite Devontae Adams desperately. I, I know that Aaron Rodgers might want out. I've seen rumors and rumblings of that. So if Jordan loves the quarterback next year, He's still going to need receivers. And Cardarius Tony can do a lot more than just catch the ball. He can be a guy like a Depot Samuel, like a Brandon Ayuk, like a Tyreek Hill. I think he's very, very fast. Yes, Brad's, Brad's reminded me of that. He is. Um, he can do a lot of things for that Packers offense. So I'm going Cardarius Tony at 29. I have a slightly different pick. I love the wide receiver idea, but I have them going with a different dude. I have them taking uh, Terrace Marshall out of LSU. I think that he, that dude was doing great um, when a quality quarterback was throwing to him in um, Joe Burrow. I think that if you give him the opportunity, especially with someone like Aaron Rodgers throwing to him, he's going to flourish. He's going to do a good job. And by the way, it was Jonah Hill that we were trying to think of. Ah, oh, thank you. Jonah Hill, yes. that's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyhow, uh, Kyle, you and I are, had like almost the, the exact same draft. Kadarius Tony goes here. It's like a no brainer. Um, dude is fast. Um, he was the only thing that really scared me about Florida's offense when we played him uh, besides Kyle Pitts. But I don't, was Pitts there for that game? I can't remember. I don't know. I don't think he was hurt. I think so too. Here. I think he just declined to play because he didn't want to hurt his draft stock. Or decline to play because, you know, he didn't want to suffer the loss of losing out. Really, but that's different. Uh, anyhow, let's move on to the next draft pick. We're getting real close on our time here. Yep. I have the Buffalo Bills selecting Najee Harris at number 30. Uh, Devin Singletary is not the answer. They need a running back. They need a running back game. They need someone to carry the ball 20 times a game. Uh, Singletary is not it. He can be a good number two back. I don't think Zach Moss is the answer either. They need someone to pair up with Josh Allen. I have Najee Harris at number 30. 
I really don't think Najee Harris is going to go that low. I think he's going to be long gone by pick number 30. Um, I have them showing up the defense. Um, they need someone, especially on that linebacker core. I have them taking Nick Bolton, the linebacker out of Missouri. I think that he could be the guy to really help them out. Um, you could argue that they could need, you need someone on the offense because of how their offense performed again um, in the um, Amer- American League Championship game, but ultimately American Conference Championship. Yeah, so um, I think Nick Bolton could be a really good pick for them. Luke, we were so close when you said linebacker. I got really excited. Um, <laughs> I have them taking Aziz Ojolari from Georgia. Um, Georgia does produce good players, believe it or not. They just can't pull it together as a team. Don't know why. Um, anyhow. At number 31, I have the Buccaneers selecting Jason Owe, defensive end slash linebacker from Penn State. Wait. Shaq Barrett's going to be – Wait, wait, wait. Wouldn't that be Kansas City? Oh, oh, my God. Oh, 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 no. Okay. I have Kansas City trading – sorry. I have Kansas City trading – with the Detroit Lions, they're going to go to number 31. They're going to come back in the first round, and they're going to select Mac Jones, quarterback from Alabama, because I have Devonta Smith at number seven. We're going to pair up Mac Jones and Devonta Smith again, and I have the Lions going Mac Jones at number 31. Spicy. That is very spicy, and I can't say that I hate it. Um, I do have the Chiefs taking a rather unconvention- unconventional pick. I think that a lot of their receivers and stuff are getting older. And so I think while they're, they want to start um, gaining a bit more um, youth at that position, I have them taking Kadarius Tony, the wide receiver out of Florida. I think if you get Kadarius Tony in a room with Sammy Watkins, Tyreek Hill, some of these players, you could really serve to develop a very, very young wide receiver core that will serve you in the future going forward. Um, so I guess we're all going different directions here. Uh, let me start this out by saying I'm not concerned with the Chiefs so long. If the Chiefs had had their tackles, I think that game would have gone a little differently. But I'm not really concerned with the O-line because Mahomes wasn't really pressured a lot before that game. Like he's usually has time in the pocket. He can make something happen. I'm more concerned with the defense. Uh, defense has a lot of problems, especially at linebacker position. I am going to throw a bit of a curveball here because I've seen it in two different mock drafts, and I heard the reasons why, and I like it. Um, Kansas City is going to have them selecting Dylan Moses out of Alabama. Um, granted, Dylan Moses did not have a very sexy year this year, but he's been high on a lot of drafts um, for a lot because he's just this big guy. He's very length, uh, lengthy. He's got the athleticism there. He's got the intelligence there. Um I think they're going to look for another linebacker because their linebacker position is kind of iffy. So we'll see what happens, but that's just my thoughts on that one. Uh, Last pick. Sorry, guys. It is Tampa Bay because they won the Super Bowl. Uh, Uh, Tampa Bay retirement home. I guess I can't call them that anymore. Yeah, that's that's (laughs) also where we were wrong because I think we all had the Chiefs. Besides that, uh, Jason Owe have them at 32 because they don't have enough money this offseason. They have around $13 They need to resign Chris Godwin, and if they do that, they will not have enough money for Shaq Barrett because he's going to get paid $100 million probably. I guarantee you he will. So they need someone to replace him. I think Jason Owe could do a decent job at that. I have them picking someone who can anchor that inside D-line. I have them taking Christian Barmore out of Alabama. I think if you add in someone like that, I have to give so many kudos to the Tampa Bay defense. They played lights out in the Super Bowl. It was scary to watch. And yes, Kansas City was missing a few of their tackles. But the thing is, Pat Mahomes is usually a force to be reckoned with, regardless of how down and out you think he is and to keep him out of the end zone all night long was something to watch so kudos to that I think you double down on having that quality defense you get someone else on the inside of that d-line and you you continue to wreak havoc with that defense Kyle you and I are on the same page I'll be very surprised if they bring back Shaq Barrett 
unless Shaq, for whatever reason, comes on a smaller deal. But I I doubt it. I really doubt it. Um, however, I don't have OA on my board anymore. But I do have Gregory Russo rounding out the end of the first round. That would be a heck of a pick for the Buccaneers because he could almost be a plug-and-play immediately. He'd be just fine. All right, guys. I think that wraps it up for – the mock draft. Brad, can you tell people where they can find us? Sure can. We have a website. It is on Anchor, and it is anchor.fm slash jocks of all trades. You can find our Facebook through there. You can find YouTube, um, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to us. That is the best way to get connected with us and find out. Um, or you can go on to Facebook as well, and you can connect with us that way. Yep, we're here every Usually every Tuesday or Thursday we record. We're on Facebook, like Brad said. So you can find us in um, Apple on there as well every Tuesday or Thursday. We do it every week. We're pretty consistent with that. Um, So I think that wraps it up for this episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye. See you.